Good morning. On behalf of the Salisbury School community, I would like to extend a warm welcome to all parents, siblings, grandparents, and friends who are present in the Centennial Quadrangle for this closing moment of celebration for the class of 2016. I would like to recognize the members of the Salisbury Board of Trustees who have joined us today, including our retiring chairman, Michael Sylvester, class of 1959, his classmate and dear friend, and our vice chairman, Dick Field, also class of 59, and newly elected chairman, Mr. Lee Spencer. Also in attendance today are trustees Dan Kane, Ashley Harrington, Adelaide Harris, Dickie Regal, Woody Rudder, and Michael's predecessor, Tony Woodruff. Welcome to all. And a tip of the, cat to the, uh, of the cap to the weather gods, um, this is one of those June days where you never know. But uh, this is my 25th year at Salisbury School, and for 24 of them, we've been right here uh, in this quadrangle under mostly dry skies. You may feel a raindrop or two, but we're going forward. I was worried a few weeks ago when my assistant Carol said we should order sunscreen for graduation, thinking that she had totally jinxed the weather. But maybe in doing so, we got this beautiful day cool, without sun, a perfect day for a graduation. As you may know, we hold our twice weekly school meetings right here. Uh, right on these, this is called the senior steps. The seniors often sit here and, and the rest of the school stands uh, on the pavement and, and the faculty make announcements from here. But we do it rain or shine, fall, winter, and spring. I like to think that uh, there are some times when it's raining that people are looking at me kind of cross-eyed but I like to think that it's a symbol of resilience and toughness that we sneer at the weather at times. So today, today is perfect, um, in my opinion. So here we are, gathered once again on the last Friday in, in uh, excuse me, the first Friday in June, in the Centennial Quadrangle, celebrating the cherished class of Salisbury Boys, our sons, the class of 2016. What a joyous moment for all. And I will say a bit blissful too. It's hard for us to say goodbye. You've heard me say over and over again as you've been on this hilltop that we see you as our sons. We love you as our sons when you are here. And while sons drive their parents crazy at times, parents, you know what I'm talking about, we watch with glee and pride as you grow and become accomplished young men. It is a divine existence we lead, guiding you through your adolescent journey. But on today's like today, our hearts are both bursting with pride and aching painfully with the knowledge that you are leaving our nest for good. To the parents who are seated here today on this momentous occasion, I can only imagine the joy and satisfaction that you are feeling. This is such a great moment for you and your son, a seminal moment in this life. Please know that we deeply appreciate the sacrifices that you make in order to have your son attend Salisbury. It is a huge financial investment, but as I've said many times, it may be even a greater emotional investment. It's not easy leaving, letting your sons leave home as teenagers. It's not easy letting someone else care for your sons on a daily basis. So on behalf of the entire faculty, I'd like to say thank you once again. Thank you for allowing us to teach your sons, to parent your sons, and to love your sons as, they, as if they were our own. Each one of them is a precious gift, so thank you. To my faculty and staff colleagues, teaching is an art. And the best teachers are constantly creating and innovating. It's a never-ending pursuit of perfection in a craft where there really is no perfect. We have a truly remarkable company of artists here at Salisbury. And as much as these beautiful buildings and idyllic setting, our beloved traditions color our lives here at Salisbury, it is the depth of commitment, the breadth of talent, and the strength of character in our faculty that truly defines this school. This past year we faced 
an unexpected challenge or two. But when the call went out for reinforcements, we showed how much we care for the boys and for each other. This school community is extraordinary. So thank you to all. Thank you for doing the very best for the boys. And finally, and I promised him that I wouldn't do this, but I lied. We have in our midst today, for one final time, a Salisbury legend, a true original, one of the giants, a man whose name now rests with other Salisbury legends, names like Carr and Priestman and Myers and Williams. This is the 115th graduation at Salisbury School, and Mr. Dennis Shortell has been witness to 39 of them. He is an exceptional teacher and a truly adored colleague and friend. Would retiring history instructor Dennis P. Shortell please rise so that we all can salute an incredibly distinguished career at Salisbury School.
But before we turn to our speakers, I'd like to share just a thought or two about the group of boys seated before me. I promised you this moment would come. I know that many of you have said to me over the last few weeks, God, it took forever. But nonetheless, here we are, together for one last time. It's been a long journey since we began this journey. It's been a long time since we began this journey together. For some of you, it started four years ago on a late summer day, hot day, sitting in the back of the chapel. I can still see some of your faces. You were so young, somewhat intimidated, and maybe even a little scared. Your class grew over the years, and for a handful of you, it began 262 days ago, on September 15, 2015. And on that day, you officially became the class of 2015. And I'll speed up my remarks so that we can avoid the weather. <laughs> and you've all shared an impressive year as the campus elder statesman. And as I said yesterday in the award ceremony, you've led in the classroom, in the dormitories, and on the athletic fields. First and foremost, scholarship has been a hallmark with a large number of cum laude inductees. Pod, Wanjun, Anthony, Seal, Harold, Frank, Arby, Chris, and Kui and Mac. A college matriculation list that is among the best we've ever seen, underscoring your merit. You should be proud of what you've accomplished together. We're also grateful for the leadership in the residential life of this school, a dedicated group of prefects. Chris, Arby, Neil, Donald, Eric, Anthony, Hui, Ryland, Spencer, David, Frank, Charles, Jack, Torrance, and Kyle. What a solid cast and crew. We're also grateful for the boys who were the glue that kept this class together with good humor and friendship. Guys like Spencer, Johnny Suits, Julian, Liam, and others. We will remember so many heartfelt and thoughtful chapel speeches. Veo, Hui, Nate, Jake, Henry and Anthony. Impressive music performances in the chapel and the Field Music Center from Seal and Harold, Ryan, Mack, and others. With a great smile, we will remember a hilarious production of Spamalon. The sight of you guys in tight singing and carrying on, that will, that, I think that one's burned in my memory. <laughs> a classic moment and an outstanding success for your class. Again, Jake, Nate, Kyle, Quentin, Brian, Andrew, George, Luke, Anthony, Kevin, Hanben, Matt, Paul, and Jordan. Service opportunities like blood drives and soup kitchens, and of course, great achievement in athletics. An Erickson League football title led by Paul and Harrison, Adrian, Jesse, Tyler, Jamil, Eric, Nate, Jaron, Ryan, and Kyle. Promising athletes on the soccer pitch, Daniel, Anthony, and Henry. A Housatonic Hockey League title with Nate and James and Henry and Dane and Parker and Luke and Jordan and Cole and David and Thomas and Eddie and Anthony leading the charge. The best backcourt in New England, LT and Kendrick. And this spring we had lost to cheer, a playoff team on the baseball diamond including Spencer Ryland, Sam, Jack and Thomas. An upstart lacrosse team that turned their noses at naysayers and finished in the top 25 in the country. Stalwarts like Jake, Anthony, Matthew, Will, Alex, Jordan, Martin, Keith, Alex, Chris, Kyle, Brendan, Harrison, and Eric. So unselfish, so hardworking. Brett and Jack guiding the Knights to new highs in the tennis courts. And it never been done before, undefeated first varsity eight that won this prestigious Frederick Sill Trophy, the symbol of New England Prep School Championship rowing. Led by an exemplary group of oarsmen, Will, Peter, Charlie, Tim, Torrance, assisted by Zachary Jackson, George, Vea, and Alex. So much achievement, so much to be proud of. And last but not least, the class of 2016 has brought a new hairstyle to the hilltop. The man bun, also known as the top knot. My hope is that when you return for your fifth reunion, that style is just a distant bad <laughs> one.
<laughs> Nevertheless, the class of 2016 has truly made its mark. We trust that you'll take these memories with you, boys, and the knowledge of what it takes to succeed and to achieve. But more important than individual achievement, we trust that you've learned what it means to be a man of character and substance. The world needs men who are ready to make a difference, who are ready to lead. You've heard it hundreds of times, so I hope it's burned into your soul by now. To be a Salisbury gentleman means to be great brothers and great sons, great husbands and great fathers giving members of your community, dependable, supportable, thoughtful work colleagues. That's what's expected of you. That's it, boys. Be that kind of man and you will indeed honor the many gifts that have been given to you by your parents, your family, and your teachers and your mentors. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you for your partnership and your good humor. Thank you for your exemplary character. Trust that the light in the cupola that sits atop of Maine will shine brightly through your lives and will lead you back to the hilltop in years to come. Please rise. I present the class of 2016. We are so proud of you. Outstanding service of members of the Salisbury Schools faculty and staff. And this morning it is a pleasure to acknowledge a number of milestones that colleagues have reached in their careers at Salisbury. Faculty and staff members who are completing five years of service, please stand and, and be congratulated. Julia Barbado, Michael Biankowski, Nancy Cookham, Cookingham, Mary Craig, Josh Dalton, Terry Duffy. Jeff May, Jesse Kulum, Jason Pinella, <laughs> Diane Ratcliffe, Mike Stanton, and Douglas Wiseman. Congratulations. <laughs> Completing 10 years of service, Peter McCarran. Completing 15 years of service, Bill Boyer, Carol Colpitz, Madame Del Foss, and Judith Wire. <laughs> Completing 20 years of service, Dean of Faculty, Ronan McChristy. <laughs> Celebrating 25 years of service to Salisbury, the Mayor, Curtis Rain. Celebrating 30 years of service, and she's sitting to my right, Rosemary Lane Lopez. And celebrating 35 years of service, Dick Curtis. I'd also like to acknowledge, and I don't see her out there, but I'm sure she's here because I've seen her this morning, retiring after 28 years at Salisbury School, Rosemary Mackey. It is my privilege and honor, as I said, to introduce today's graduation speaker. Michael Sylvester is a nationally recognized entrepreneur and businessman. Early on in his career, his curiosity and ingenuity led him to develop and patent unique technologies, such as the recipe for NOAC's cross-country skis. This and other innovations paved the way for success in the manufacturing sector, and in 1977, he founded his own firm, Foam Seal, which later became NovaGuard. Today, NovaGuard Solutions is a leading edge company providing engineered solutions to the automotive, building construction, electrical, medical, and product assembly industries. 
The company has developed distinctive productive lines for over 30 years with customers throughout North America, Europe, and Asia. In addition, Novogard has won accolades as a critically aware and environmentally responsible corporate citizen, creating products that have minimal environmental impact. Mr. Sylvester grew up in Lake Forest, Illinois, and attended Salisbury, graduating in 1959. Afterward, he attended Colby College and then received an MBA from Harvard Business School. Mr. Sylvester believed strongly in volunteer service and has served on the boards of Colby College, St. John the Divine Cathedral in New York City, as well as the Salisbury Board of Trustees for more than 30 years. Two of his sons, Michael Sylvester, class of 1985, and Andrew Sylvester, class of 2002, have also attended Salisbury. I asked Mr. Sylvester to speak to us today because I am inspired by his commitment to family and to the institutions that have helped shape his life. Boys, you've heard me say time and time again, you can do anything you want in this life. You have the gift of a Salisbury education, and you're about to head off to your undergraduate experiences. Whatever road you choose, I hope you will take what you have learned and make a place for yourself in this world, as Mr. Sylvester has done. He's created a business that gives people jobs and livelihood, a business that has impact. And in his free time, he sought to help institutions do good things for the world, places like Salisbury School. However, more than anything else, he is an incredible friend. He's the kind of man who shows up when the chips are down. He wears his heart on his sleeve and he is always there for those he loves. He is the epitome of the Salisbury gentleman. It is with great pleasure that I introduce our graduation speaker, Mr. Michael Sylvester. you've learned a lot here. You've been given the best possible gift you can, a Salisbury education. So it's up to you, up to you to go out and do something with that. For me today is also a very personal day. As I'm retiring from the board after 30 years and as a member of the class, I have been associated with Salisbury for 57 years. And that's older than our headmaster, just to give you a little perspective. I also have on the po podium today my lifelong friend, Dick Field. Dick and I started together at Salisbury, and we have worked hard, and he has been my right-hand man as vice chairman of the board. So let me share with you some stories about why Salisbury is so important, so important to me and hopefully to all of you. To the parents, I've sat there twice. One son graduated, one did not, and I was vice chairman of the board. So, rest easy, no more calls from the faculty, no more Saturday night, oh my God, what has he done now? No more meetings. Hey kid, get your grades up or you're not getting into college. It's over, you deserve a pat on the back, and you guys did it for your parents as well as yourself. Congratulations. <laughs> to the faculty, you are blessed because you have the best faculty at this school, and they have dedicated their lives to you at breakfast, in the classroom, in the dorm, on the playing fields. <clears throat> I want to tell you one quick little story. One of our trustees had a son here, and the kids slept in every morning. So he went to the parent, uh, the faculty parent, and said, you know, you have a daughter who's five. How about if I give her a dollar a day, and she goes in, and grabs Danny and pulls him out of bed. So little Emma did that, and sure enough, every week, Dad showed up and gave Emma her five bucks. 
That's the engagement of our faculty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I came to Salisbury School from St. Paul's School. St. Paul's and I didn't fit. I was at the bottom of the class, and I was a hockey player. Well, you know, that's just not what St. Paul's kids wanted. So through the grace and love of Reverend, Reverend George Langdon, I came here in 1957 as a fifth former. At the end of the first six weeks, Mr. Myers, the classic math teacher, gave us a geometry test. And I finished with a rock solid 38, <laughs> way at the bottom. Now the caveat was, if you didn't pass geometry, you stayed here for summer school. If you passed, you could go home. So it occurred to me finally that maybe hard work and never giving up would do it. So I set my alarm clock at 5.30 in the morning and got up every day and studied geometry. And you remember those books, uh, after you turn the pages, they get fatter and fatter. My geometry book was like this, but I managed to squeak out, squeak out a 90. And that was a whole run for me, particularly when I was coming from the bottom of the class. I just didn't give up. The same thing happened, obviously, because I was a hockey player. And uh, we were playing guttery. And one of the guys cut me off. And I went up over his head, landed on my shoulder, and dislocated me. They said, you'll never play hockey again. And so I went to the Sheridan Hospital. I did therapy, all kinds of things. We didn't have the nice gym we have now. And it all was worked out. So by the fall, I was able to come back and because I worked all summer and I just made up my mind I was going to play. The coach said, you look good, suit up. So they put me on the ring, but I had to have a brace. But as captain of the team, I was going to be with my brothers. The final example of never giving up was when I got out of Colby, I went to work in a steel mill. Now, I don't know if anybody's been to the steel mill, but that's, you know, that's not like working in McDonald's. That's really muddy and tough and hot. So after a couple of years, I said, this really isn't, isn't for me. So I wrote Harvard and um, applied to the business school. Well, they weren't real fast in responding. And uh, they finally sent me a letter and of course, Wait, Mister. I said, oh, God, there goes my chance. So I thought for a minute, Michael, you know, just don't give up. I got on a, on a plane and I flew to Harvard. And I remember the guy's name today, Tony Athos. He was the director of admissions. We talked, talked. He shook his head and said, I made a mistake. You're starting. So, for me, it was a lesson in never giving up. And that's what my speech is today. 75 years ago, Winston Churchill, the greatest, greatest leader in the world, was addressing the boys at Harrow on their graduation. Now we all know Winston Churchill is a great orator. But I'm going to share with you his speech. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Never give up. Never, ever give up. So the great class of 2016, if there's one thing you can take away, that's it. And I promise you, it'll be with you throughout your life. God bless. God bless everyone here at Salisbury School. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Michael. Jake's a little anxious to get up here, but I got a word or two that I'd like to say about you first. So. It is a special Salisbury tradition for the president of the Sixth Forum to address these proceedings, and we will look to Jake Hescock to perform his last official duty in this role. However, before Jake is called to the podium, I'd like to pause and thank him in front of his classmates and in front of parents and, and honored guests for the work he's done in leading this class this year. Ten days or so ago, Jake addressed his classmates and the faculty in the chapel, <clears throat> one of our last chapel speeches of the school year. He spoke about his mentors and his friends. He spoke about the value and impact of relationships. Many would say that relationships are at the very heart of the Salisbury experience. Now, Jake could have spoken about his many accomplishments, football championships, great basketball victories, his recruitment and admission to the University of Wisconsin to play tight end for Badger Nation. But that wasn't what Jake wanted to share with his classmates. Instead, he was reflective about his decision to come to Salisbury and the difference in his life that that decision had made. He wanted to talk about his teachers and his coaches, those men and women who had guided him and advised him. Teachers, coaches, dorm parents who had loved him like a son. He urged his younger classmates to reach out and invest in relationships and in people, in partnerships with the adults in their lives. He spoke about meeting the best friends he'll ever make, including the one sitting right next to him, and what they mean to him. It was pure. It was raw emotion, and it was from the heart. I know in my heart that one of the key reasons we've had such a terrific year this year is the character that Jake has inspired in his classmates. He is a leader, a young man who lifts us up. Exuberant? Yes, extremely. That's a key piece of his leadership style but loyal as the day is long and everybody knows it. It is my pleasure to call Jake Hescock to the podium. Jake, seize the moment. It's been a great ride. Whether you've been here for one year or four, you are an extremely important part of this community. People always talk about the community at Salisbury and the brotherhood it offers and how unique it is. I remember looking back to coming here and hearing how close everyone was. But you parents, friends, and family really don't understand unless you experience it for yourselves. I've made some of the best relationships in my life here. I look down to my right, and I am so grateful for the chance to be with all you brothers for this one last day. As you heard from Mr. Chandler last night, this class is a special one. The things we have accomplished are outstanding, but in 10, 20, 30 years, I won't remember what awards I won or my grades were. I'll remember the faces. I'll remember the time spent laughing until it hurts. I'll remember Mr. Cool and putting on some Katy Perry and the gym and dancing around. I remember the times when my brothers and me bonded, because that bond will never be broken. That is something I'm, sh I'm sure of. I know I can count on these people for the rest of my life. The definition of brotherhood is an association, society, or community of people linked by a common interest. That common interest here is success. This community is like this because we want to succeed, and the faculty here want to see us succeed. We all share the common goal to better ourselves every day. To me, brotherhood isn't just a word. It's total dedication to each other. Our, our relationship with each other here is exactly like that. Total dedication to each other. Whether it is standing in the cold and rain, 
cheering your brothers on, or listening to them give a presentation. We are totally devoted to one another. We are a group of determined young men that won't ever quit. We are tenacious. That is what makes this school the athletic and scholastic legend it has become. But we haven't done this by ourselves. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to many people. To our teachers, thank you for so unselfishly sharing your time, talent, and knowledge with us. Yes, we know it was your job, you had to do it. But what you did for us went beyond the call of duty. You took the time to explain assignments, sometimes repeatedly because we weren't paying attention. You allowed us to come to your classroom after school for extra help when you could have gone home to spend time with your family. You put in the effort to make lessons more interesting so we wouldn't just tune out. You demanded excellence from us. Whether or not we wanted to give it, you set the bar high and challenged us to live up to it. To our parents, thank you for supporting us in more ways than it's possible to count. You listened to our complaints, you came to our plays, attended our sporting events, and always had our backs. You commiserated over our daily dramas, but you tried to give us enough space to learn how do things work for ourselves. These are just a few of the thousands of ways you supported us on our journey. To our coaches and advisors, thank you for making school about more than just classwork. Through sports, we learn how to power on through adversity and give our best effort, win or lose. We learn the importance of discipline and good sportsmanship. Through other activities like participating in clubs, school plays, and service projects, we learned how to work closely with others and achieve a common goal. And we had a lot of fun doing it. For our custodial staff and lunch and attendance, thank you for keeping our school clean and safe. You know better than anyone else what slobs we've been. You actually deserve some kind of medal for that. To Mr. Chandler and Mr. Wayne and the Deans, Thank you for keeping things running smoothly. Without your help, some of us might not be graduating today. As you can see, behind each graduate, there must have been at least a dozen people helping in at least a dozen ways. The best way we graduates can show our gratitude is to make the most of the opportunity we've been given. And go forward into the world with the intention of making it a better place. So, men, here it comes. Here comes the beginning of the rest of your life. Here comes your independence, here comes your freedom, your liberty, and your future. Here comes the start of a new adventure with all new surroundings and all new people. Here comes the discovery of you and your capabilities. Here comes the goodbyes, here comes forever. But there it goes. There goes the comfort of your roommate and teachers and friends. There goes the Friday night lights, that will forever brighten the scene that you consider home. There go your best friends and the convenience of going to their room at 2 a.m. to watch a movie or just talk. There goes your routine at Salisbury, of waking up and going to bed with the same people you have been for years. There go your final days in those hallowed halls that will forever define you as the person you became. There goes the last pitch, shot, bowl, or pass will ever make in that field or court again. There goes your senior formal, your last weeks of high school, and high school finals. And there goes the familiarity of all the people and places that fell alongside. Because with every new journey you're about to embark on, there's something you'll have to say goodbye to for a little while. This time is exciting and beautiful, but take heart and leave nothing for granted. Because you'll be sitting in your dorm room on that first night, neither a complete stranger or someone you know across from you, and it will all make sense. It will make sense why they told you to extract every ounce of joy you could out of your senior year. It will make sense why the teachers told you to say thank you and hug your friends a little tighter. It will make sense why you received constant questions about where you went to college and why you took countless college readiness surveys. They were trying to prepare you for becoming a stranger to everything you used to know, to become comfortable with everything you're about to be. That will hit you again when you're home from college, and your family is talking about all that you've missed. You will think back to this place and all the memories this place has given you. You will love your new life and all the exciting friendships that accompany it. There will always be a piece of Salisbury that you will never fail. 
So make sure that you practice the motto of win the day every day before you pack your bags and begin your new life. Because there's so much going forward and there's so much to look toward. But slow down and keep everything you have right in front of you in focus. Because before you know it, all of who you are will become who you were. And who you will become will begin to make all the difference. Thank you. He came in and made a lasting impact on the Salisbury community. He was one of the funniest and most outgoing teachers we have ever met. And he is very special to the school as a whole. Mr. Childs, Mr. Star Childs, please come up and be recognized for all that you have done this year. Edwin M. 
Emma Ward Prize. Established by the faculty in 1990, the Ward Prize is awarded by vote of the faculty to that student who exemplifies the spirit of quiet and dedicated service to others, which characterized Salisbury's fourth headmaster, the Reverend Edwin Ward. This year's recipients of the Ward Prize are Anthony Druin and Wee Dong Chong. Crosby Medal, given in memory of Robert Southgate Brown Crosby by Arthur N. Sewell, is awarded by vote of the fifth and sixth forms to that sixth former who has rendered the greatest service to the school. This year, the Crosby Medal goes to Jake Hescott. founding headmaster and his wife, the Reverend Doctor and Mrs. George E. Quayle, and second headmaster, Reverend Emerson B. Quayle, is awarded by vote of the faculty to that member of the graduating class who has shown the most satisfactory development during his Salisbury years. This year's Quayle Medal recipients are Charlie Ryan and Torrance Smith. Salisbury's founding headmaster, the Reverend Dr. George E. Quayle, is awarded by vote of the faculty to that student who has rendered the greatest service to the school in leadership and loyalty. This year's award winner, Nate Carter. Peter, Bang, and Drayson. Christopher John Bilchek. <laughs> 
sorry, Lord. William Warren Berkowitz. James Dixon Calhoun. Jetkai Chen. Harrison West Cole. Jesse Connors. David Gerard DeLuca Jr. Alexander 
Brian Governor. Parker B. Dotson. Henry Dwight Dresser Clutton. Anthony Francis Drew. Nathan James Ellis. Jaron Duckett Epps. Matthew Bella Gordon. <laughs> Jamil Amori Gilmore. Henry Alfred Girardi. Wellington Rivers Hay. Jake Adam Hescock. <laughs> Cornelius DeForest Howland the Fourth. Andrew Sung Hyun Wong. <laughs> Chi Chu Anson Ip. Luke Israel. <laughs> Alexander Isaiah Ives.
David Alexander Jankowski. Jinbing Zhao. Justin Kane. Spencer Michael Langdon. Thomas Charles Lee.
Donna Vaughn Little the third. Austin Bauer. Spencer Austin Matthews. John Daniel Ninavaji.
Timothy James Humphrey.
Anthony R. Vincent. Julian Gerhard von Fink. Thomas A. Wilson. Kaiwen Yuen. challenges and experience await in the near future, and my bet is that you will fare well in any and all pursuits. Armed with character and courage, you now set out into the world and in new adventures to love, to inspire, to serve, and to prosper. Endeavor to make friends and family feel safe and happy. You'll find that there's nothing more precious on this earth than your family and friends. We expect you to live your life well. 
to make a difference. You beat me to the punch looking at you. Do me one last favor, look to your left and look to your right while you still have the chance and lock arms on cue. Memorize the faces of your classmates. You're youthful and spry, confident, excited about the possibilities that lie ahead. These are and will be your dearest friends in life. I can promise you that. Your brothers. Sad as it may be, it, it may be some time before you see each other again. So take a final glance around. In this final moment, I'm reminded of an old Scottish proverb that I like. It's a simple line and it goes like this. Were it not for hope, the heart would break. That is to say that we will miss you dearly, dearly. But we have the highest hopes for each of you. And our sadness is washed away by your promise. So take what you've been taught, go out into the world, and as Jake would say, win the day. And as you do, remember that the spirit and the strength of the brotherhood that you have been a part of here at Salisbury School will be with you always. A brotherhood that will live forever in your heart. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers. You are Salisbury men. You came to us as boys, but boys you are no longer. Godspeed, men. I love you guys.